Sound design. Yeah. All right. So, should audience depth influence crossover frequency between main and sub? Why do I care about this? Why should you care about this? And how did I figure this out? Um, that's what I'm going to talk about in today's video. Now, the short story is that it's actually less important than where you do the alignment in the room. But I want to show you how I got there in case you're interested. So what happened is that I was playing around with Merlin Van Veen's sub-align calculator, and I discovered that the lower the frequency here that I observed, the more people would end up in the coupling zone. So uh, the coupling zone is anything within 120 degrees here on the phase wheel. At least that's how I'm going to start out the conversation. So if you look at the phase wheel and you imagine two uh, signals arriving in space, uh, if they arrive and they are within 120 degrees of each other here in the phase wheel, there'll be some amount of summation. So for the beginning of this conversation, imagine that zero degrees is the alignment point, 20 uh, 120 degrees offset is what I'm calling the expiration date, and that is also one third of the phase wheel. Okay, so back to here, I'm looking at this graph and I'm seeing Oh, if I'm looking at 120 hertz, then I can make it to, let's see, 120 degrees. I can make it to about 10 meters. If I lower this to 100 hertz, now I can make it to 9 meters. So I'm getting closer. I'm putting more of the audience into the coupling zone. If I lower this even more, oh, interesting. I'm getting closer and closer. So I start wondering, like, What's the relationship here? Is there like a magic frequency where all, all, all of a sudden the entire audience is going to be in the coupling zone? Spoiler alert. No, there's not. It does help you, um, but you know, we have limitations. You'll never be able to go so low that um, this is really going to be a magic bullet for you. But I wanted to look at these relationships nonetheless. So instead of just testing frequencies one by one here, I made my own calculator so that I could test, I could look at a bunch of them together and then put them on a graph here. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. If we look at a prediction and we look at this prediction of these two speakers that are aligned at this point at the end of the audience and we're looking at 100 hertz, then we might say that the expiration date is around here. And if we look at a lower frequency, then we expand that. And now we might say that the expiration date is somewhere over here. So again, my question, like, how, how much better? Should this really be important to me? Like, should I consider lowering the uh, range of interaction of these two sources so that the wavelengths are bigger and therefore this entire space where their coupling is bigger? Um, so I had to learn a little bit of geometry uh, to build this calculator because here's the simplified relationship that we're looking at, right? Here's the design. If I turn on, this makes more sense. Okay, uh, we've got distance to main, distance and sub here from the end of the audience. So to answer this question of where is the expiration date, I need to find where these two sources uh, here somewhere deeper into the audience are going to be 120 degrees off, right? On one third of the phase wheel. So I thought to myself, if I can convert frequency to wavelength and then just multiply that by one third, then I'll know what the distance offset is between these two sources. And I should be able to estimate the expiration date. So let's do that together. If we know that if we use a speed of sound 130 and a frequency of 100 Hertz, then that's 11.3 feet for our wavelength. And if we multiply 11.3 times one third, right, 120 degrees, then our expiration date is going to be at 3.8 feet. So that's a 3.8 foot offset between main and sub. So somewhere here, deeper into the audience, I'm going to draw two new lines that should be 3.8 feet apart. But it's not just 3.8 feet because these currently already have an offset. So let me show you what I mean. If I turn on these dimensions, um, 
The distance to the sub from the microphone is 60 feet. The distance to the main from the microphone is 65 feet. That's about a five foot difference. Uh, my new offset needs to be 3.8 feet more. So 3.8 plus five is about nine. So I'm looking for a new distance offset somewhere here that's gonna be about nine feet. Now the first thing I did when I thought about this is I just tried to find it manually. I said, what if I can find it manually, then uh, I can work my way backwards from there. So I just sort of started drawing random lines here in Map XT, and I would measure those two and I'd say, are those nine feet apart? No, they're not. Okay, I need to go a little bit farther back this way. Are those nine feet? No, and that was not getting me anywhere. So I had to learn a little bit of geometry and a little bit of algebra, and that's when I started building this calculator. And uh, I figured out that if I can put in all of my dimensions here, and I can find the semi-perimeter and the area of the triangle, then I can find the height of the triangle. The height of the triangle would be this line here, right to the top of the triangle from the base here then this height of the triangle should be where that expiration date is. Now, I was a little bit sloppy in my calculations earlier. I said that it would be an offset of nine feet. It's actually 8.8. .8. Okay, so let's look and see if this is correct. 31.1 feet should give me a distance offset of 8.8. .8. So back over here in my triangle, if I just measure from the base here, 31.1, that goes to this little guy here. And now if I draw two lines back up to my speakers, then I can look at those dimensions. Okay, 40.2, 31.4. And I think we'll find that 31.2 minus 31.4 is 8.8. .8. Okay, it works. So let's see if it actually works in Map XT. So I place this microphone at 31.1 feet. Uh, I do my prediction at 100 hertz. And there we go. That's about where I put my expiration date earlier. So going through all these steps is how I kind of proved that I could find just through distance offsets uh, that I could estimate where that expiration date is gonna be. And now I can bring you to the end of the story which is that I didn't want to just look at one frequency, obviously, but I wanted to look at all of them together and put them on a graph here. So now I can look at this graph and I can say, okay, I guess uh, at about 110 hertz, um, I'll be able to cover 54% of the audience and all the way down to you know 80 hertz, I'll be able to cover 63% of the audience. But how much better is that? So then I made a place here where I could put those frequencies in, 110 to 80. And then down here that tells me that's a potential improvement of 10%. And I say, that's not really that much, but it could be important. You know, this is all relative. What if, you know, I have a really deep audience and 10% is a lot. Um, so just it's just good to have more information to use uh, as I'm thinking about how I'm going to design and optimize this system. So one more piece that I wanted to talk about, which is going back to this phase wheel. You'll notice that it's not just this side of the phase wheel that has summation, but this other side too. Because if we put zero degrees here, then as we move forward in the phase wheel, then uh, the relationship goes this way down to the expiration date. But as we move backwards, the exact same thing happens until this. So we can actually say that the coupling zone is within not just 120, but 240 degrees if you want to count going either forward or backwards. So that would be two thirds of the phase wheel. And this is what we learn in Merlin Van Veen's sub align calculator here. So he gives us a place to put in a phase offset. So instead of measuring and doing our alignment at the back of the audience, if we instead insert a 120 degree phase offset, two thirds of the, sorry, one third of the phase wheel, then that means, um, remember our image here, this is our alignment position, forwards, backwards. Same thing here, here's our alignment position, uh, forwards, backwards, 
So all of this part of the audience is in the coupling zone, and now we make it all the way up to four meters, so huge improvement here. And I did the same thing in my calculator. So I can put a 120, let's look at this number first. Um, right here, let's just look at this number, 63%. If I put in that same offset, 120 degrees, that goes way up to, um, 86, 80, 86 minus 63, 23% improvement of the coverage of the audience, which is more than double the potential improvement I make by just changing the crossover frequency. So I went through all this trouble basically just to learn that where I measure in the room is um, a lot more important than the crossover frequency that I choose or how a little bit higher, a little bit lower, the crossover region might go. It was still fun and really interesting to make this calculator, but um, that's the ultimate thing that I learned is actually the point in space where you do the alignment in the audience is more important. All right, well, I hope this was helpful for you guys. Um, let me know if you are taking these kind of considerations into your alignments when you're doing them in the field and when you're doing your sound system design. And also let me know if you saw me make any mistakes. I would love to you know, make some improvements in the calculator and my own understanding of main sub alignments. So thanks. Sound design. Live.